Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I wanted to do this video so badly because I have been buying a lot of makeup, buying a lot of skincare, trying stuff out here and there, but I haven't really reported back to you all as to like how it's going because life's been a bit hectic. And so I thought it would be a fun video to apply a full face of products I don't like very much and kind of tell you why. So I'm not saying any of these products are bad. They are just simply not for me. And I'll try to be specific as to why they don't work for me as I go through them. I don't have anything on my face. So I'm going to start with this face cream from Essence called Hello Good Stuff. It is their Sika face cream. It's this one here. I really love the Dr. Jart Sika Pear Cream. Um, actually, most ev everything in that product line I like. And I thought, oh, this would be like a nice, almost, I don't know, inexpensive product potentially that has the same uh, Centella Asiatica uh, component, the Sika component. And uh, no, <laughs> this does not have a texture I like. It smells very, very much like perfume, which for me, when it comes to skincare, it smells like straight up fragrance. It's not for me. Uh, and this smells like a bad perfume, like a bad perfume from the drugstore. Um, so I don't like it for that reason. And then when it comes to like moisture, um, I don't find that it's like soothes my skin or anything. And I also don't think it provides very much hydration. So it's just a big old dud for me. Another <laughs> dud, and this was actually kind of expensive. This is from Neutrogena. It is their lip plumping serum, health, healthy lips. I saw this, I was really attracted to the component. So what you do is you just like squeeze the product and it comes out. Um, and then you just kind of roll it on and it's a nice experience putting it on, but it does not plump. It actually feels like I'm just putting on like a face cream and I actually feel a bit of a, a weird kind of burning sensation. So that must be the plumping aspect, but it's supposed to be a peptide serum also, and I just don't find that to be the case. And and the irritation, the, the burning feeling is really not nice. Additionally, ugh, I hate pro lip products that taste bad. You know, either taste like nothing, but don't taste bad. And this one tastes bad, like really bad. I mean, look, it's like I have nothing on my lips and my lips are burning right now and my lips will be burning even more when I get to the product I'm going to get to at the end. Um, I picked up at the Sephora sale. I was super excited about this product, the Rare Beauty, this one here. Um, I have tried this in and I picked up my shade in 20W. I have tried this product in combination with lots of different primers. Um, it, it just does something that, you know, this type of product does sometimes the Fenty easy drops did it to me and that is that it does not it just kind of like sits inside of my pores it's a very thin product so it gives you a chance to really like move it around and um, doesn't provide a lot of coverage but it is a sunscreen but it has a very nice finish to it and I think this is for some people again just not for me because what it ends up doing is it is it just pools inside of each of my pores. And so there's like a collection of um, liquid in my pores and it doesn't blend out. And even if I use a brush, a beauty blender, my fingers, it won't it won't blend completely. If I look very closely at my skin and I don't know if you can see it, but it just adheres to every single pore. And I put on a generous amount of product and there's very little coverage happening. It just doesn't do anything for my skin. It didn't 
I maybe mean, evened out my skin tone overall, but it didn't like bring any vitality to my skin. It didn't really do anything. Um, so this is an absolute no for me. It maybe if you liked, like I mentioned, the Fenty Easy Drops, you would like this because that product also did the same for me. It just sort of like didn't did not mesh well with my skin, and so maybe that's part of it. But I was pretty bummed out about that because I do like a lot of Rare Beauty products and I was super excited for that release. Two products that I was super excited for. One by M Cosmetics. This uh, M Cosmetics, this is their Heaven's Glow in Baroque. This is one of their Heaven's Glow blushes. Baroque is one of the new shades. Now, it's a very beautiful product very heavy packaging, very heavy mirror, very beautiful shade, has this kind of opalescence quality. I thought this was gonna work for me. Now, if I'm being honest with myself, I knew it wasn't gonna work for me <laughs> because I have tried this blush formula before when it first came out and I did not care for it. I did not care how the product sat on my skin. I thought it was extremely unflattering and I didn't know what the hype was around it. Now, that was when the product first came out with, I think it was Magic Hour was the first uh, blush. And I thought, well, it's been a couple of years. This is a new line. I really loved the lip products from this new release. And this blush looked really, really interesting. And so I said, you know what? Maybe they've changed the formula and maybe it's going to look beautiful. And maybe dot, dot, dot. So I bought it. And, you know, the thing is, I have a feeling it's going to look really pretty on camera. But in person, this is not, this is not flattering, unfortunately. It's a very pretty shade. I think if you had like poreless cheeks um and you like that glow i mean it's a very glowy 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 uh blush and you can build it up which is nice and it's kind of this bronzy with a slight bit of peach pink to it so there there is life i love it from afar so i'm, I'm not gonna say i don't love it from afar i just don't love it up close. I feel like it it accentuates every single pore, it accentuates every single flaw, and it drops in some like pearlescent sheen in on it and I can't control it. Yeah that sheen is just no good and I look up close and it actually has tiny 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 sparkles. It's not even just a pearl. It's It has literal flecks of some shimmer in it that it's just not flattering. Similarly, and I don't think I have to really put this one on because it has almost the same problem, is the Bobbi Brown Illuminating Bronzing Powder in Aruba. Now, I love this product in the shade Antigua, but in Aruba, and this is Aruba, it's this bronzy color. I don't like it because it has the same problem as the M Cosmetics where it has these flecks of sparkle. And for some reason, the blush Antigua does not have that, and yet it has a glow. So I don't know what happened here. Um, another product that I gave a second chance to, because everyone talks about it, and it's never worked for me. And so I thought, is it the color that's not working for me? And that is a MAC Paint Pot. This is the shade Soft Ochre. I have tried this numerous times to be a base for my eyeshadows and it does nothing. Number one, it makes my eyelids look super, super dry, which, okay, fine, I've used less product. It's a nice neutralizing color, I'll give it that. Like if I just, if I just, you know, kind of put it on and look at the difference, it is nice for that effect. But, and maybe again, it's my chemistry and my super oily eyelids. Uh, this thing creases on me real bad. I mean, creases on me just as, as though I didn't have anything on my, my eyelids. I've tried it 
I tried it with with a brush. I, I've used it a couple of times and it, this is just not a product for me. I had to use in the past uh, and kept around for a long time, like for a year, trying it on and off painterly. And finally, I just gave up on it. And so I don't know what, what possessed me to purchase this recently, but I I purchased it recently and it's it's just not, it's not for me. Like Let's that. talk about the eyeshadow palette that I was thoroughly disappointed in. This is by Nabla. Such a cool packaging. Um, this is their Read My Mind palette. When I saw this color story, which let me just show you. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. To me, it sort of reminds me of Charlotte Tilbury quads, um, especially like these three here. But you can kind of use the colors in line this way or you can kind of use them as quads it was a really cool concept my biggest issue with this is there is little to no pigmentation i would say it's buildable but it really isn't there's very very little punch here in fact this color which i was so excited about I love like chocolatey metallic colors and I was like, oh, this is gonna be so good. But look, more of a topper, but as a topper, it's very weak. It like doesn't have enough sparkle, enough punch to even be an effective topper, like in a palette. So I'm gonna do a quick eye look. I was most excited about kind of like this row, these two rows, um, but yeah, all all the shades are pretty. This one has a little more punch, has like some duochrome in it. This one's quite pretty and creamy, but it really is kind of an anomaly. The rest are really light toppers. I mean, look at that. The bronze is okay. The shade is okay. That one, that one has a nice sheen to it. These three kind of all yield this like very blah topper kind of kind of thing. I, I don't know what they were thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this row. I'm going to start with this green here. And so you see, it doesn't even pick up that well. And this is a good brush. This is from BK Beauty. And the collaboration with Hot and Flashy. I love these brushes. I mean, look at that. And it's patchy, but this is not great. This is not great. I'm gonna pick up some of that lighter shade next door. Uh, such a whole hum green. Let me let me try to do something with this and I'll jump back on. I'm back. I think this is like the worst eye look I've ever created. It's so patchy and it's like the worst watercolory kind of vibe. Uh, it's this like muddy green brown. I tried to use so many shades. They don't layer. I used this to deepen. Didn't really work. I used mainly this, some of this. I topped it off with some of this pink sparkle, kind of, sort of, you can see it. I blend the edges around with this. I built some of this color. I have tried the, I have tried to stick to just the quads before and it's just not good. Another product that I was very excited about and I picked up at the Ulta sale when they were having their 21 Days of Beauty was this eye pencil from Bare Minerals. It's their Mineralist Lasting Eyeliner. I picked mine up in the shade Garnet and I had seen Zabrina here on YouTube review these and I was so excited because she, I don't know, it, they worked very well with her. So it's kind of this garnet color. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. It's a beautiful color. I love the color. It's super unusual because it's red, but it has brown and it also like, you see it, the color flips. So it is like a duochrome, multi-chrome type of eyeliner. And I was like, whoa, Bare Minerals. This is really interesting of you to have done this. <laughs> And I was super excited for it. The problem is that it's very soft. Like the eyeliner is so soft that it just collapses onto itself. 
So I have to be very, very delicate. Um, and then it just kind of crumbles. I'm actually gonna just put it in my water line and stick to it that way. It is an, a really cool color and it's very unusual in my collection. So I am gonna keep it and just really stick to the waterline. But anytime I've tried to do the eyeliner so that it can be above, it just doesn't work. It's too soft, it's too, too soft. And inevitably you need a little bit of pressure to just apply eyeliner on the top and it, it will crumble on you. I lost, I think probably, 20% of this pencil the first time I used it in attempting that and then it just crumbled and I was like no what happened and yeah it is not as long wear on me as some of the other eyeliners I have in my collection but I still think the color is really unique really pretty and you know I, I really just don't have a color like it at all in my in my eyeliner collection. So, and I like how it looks with my eyes. It's a very pretty like complement color. It brings out some of the green in my brown eyes and I really like that. So, um, so yeah, this one is a little bit mixed feelings. I would just say caution, caution, caution when using it. But if you can use that caution and if there's a color that you feel super unique to you, Maybe you would like it, uh, I don't know. I don't know, that one's, a, I'm a little bit less passionate about it being a dud. It just still needed to be tweaked because I'm just so in love with the color that I might forgive it a little bit. I also just wanted to mention, because it was in my box, this eyeshadow primer from Ulta Beauty Nude Matte. This, everyone raved about this and I was using it and now I cannot get any product out of this. And when I do, I mean, like I could squeeze, squeeze, squeeze like crazy. I'm squeezing so hard right now. And I cannot get this product out. And when I do, it just kind of like bubbles up. It's very weird. Um, I don't know if I got a bad one, but that's in my, in my dud box. Let me put on this mascara. This is from e.l.f. It's Big Mood Mascara. Oh, wait, should I do this one or? Oh, darn. There's another mascara that is worse than this one. All right. I don't know where my ma the other mascara was going to complain about what. But I guess I'll complain about it some other time. This one from e.l.f. I've been really enjoying um, their Lash It Loud mascara. And this one has a very different brush. It's like that fluffy almost Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara brush, which normally I don't mind, but this one just is so huge and it's so messy. It's not a particularly like wet um, mascara, but it doesn't last a long time. And it does do something that the mascara I was gonna complain about before does, which is, it makes my eyelashes stick together like later on in the day so I don't know if it's again my body chemistry and as I'm just warming everything up inevitably um, I just blink and my eyelashes like stick together stay together it's not as bad as the L'Oreal one I was gonna complain about the L'Oreal lash extensions that one is the devil incarnate especially if you're driving a car oh my god and I had to learn the hard way. I was driving and I was like, I couldn't unglue my right eye. So that was no good. This one is just really not fantastic. Um, not as bad, but not fantastic. I would not repurchase it again. A couple of other disappointing products. I know I used eyeshadow today, but I initially was going to use these guys, which is they're by CoverGirl. They're the Exhibitionist Lid Paints, these here picked up a couple. These are the most lackluster, like one and done kind of shadows I've ever used. And they were expensive too. I, I don't even know. It's so bizarre, so bizarre. But this is the shade, I don't even know what, 125 Amaretto. This is Amaretto. 
and it looks like it looks like oh okay you would like that one and done but i'm going to tell you so so lackluster and also patchy like in some light you see how it kind of has like an uneven application of the base color and as you blend it out more and more to try to get that even application you just end up blending the product it does not have a really nice sheen to it it's it's just not particularly nice at all I would, I would use a color shock shadow. Also the wear time, to call yourself a lid paint, no wear time, no wear time. Creases like crazy. I picked it up because I thought, oh, is this a dupe for the Smashbox um, always on paints that I love? And that's just like a neutral color. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll use that as a base for eye looks, but no, since it doesn't have a good wear time, it makes a terrible base. So all around, not not the best. Another disappointment that I had at the drugstore is with Pixie. I picked up the Endless Shade Stick in the shade Matte Cocoa. And the problem with this one isn't the color. The color is fine. It's a neutral brown, very nice. Um, the problem is it doesn't stay. So it creases very quickly, just kind of goes everywhere, does not dry down and really adhere to the eyes. And that's like the biggest no-no for me when it comes to those type of products. Like if I'm using a shadow stick, it's because I don't want it to go anywhere. So I'm using my Laura Mercier or Bobbi Brown. This one I thought might be a good dupe for those, but it is not a good dupe for it. It blends out really nicely, but it, Consider it like a regular eyeshadow. It doesn't have the long wear that you would expect. Let us, speaking of eyebrow, I need to do my eyebrows and I'm gonna do my eyebrows with a product that I'm not the biggest fan of. And that is by Iconic London. It is the eyebrow cushion. I got mine in the shade medium. This also was on sale, I think, during the um sephora no no not sephora during the ulta 21 days and this is a product i had wanted to try for a really long time um and it was always sold out it's already grimy because i've used it um and yeah it always sold out but it's essentially a cushion with two shades and again this is medium and it has this little brush that you open it up and it's a spoolie on one side and a brush on the other. And I thought this is so cute. <laughs> I just thought this was like the cutest thing. Um, it's very expensive. It's something like $40. Um, I'm going to use the darker shade first. My issue with this, and I'm, and I'm using first the brush it comes with because I want to be truthful about why I don't like something but I found that the color wasn't exactly perfect for me it's a little too warm leaning although you think in the in the container like you think oh this is not that warm leaning it's also something that very quickly you can draw in too heavily your um eyebrows which is a thing for me like like there we're okay we're, we're okay but I feel like I almost hold my breath because I can overdraw so quickly so quickly in fact this is my real problem eyebrow the one that has the less least amount of hair and of course I can use my own brush and I have with this product and it's fine but it's not without like seriously ho holding my breath and praying that I get it right and it has been the case where I've done one eyebrow really nicely and the other one I have totally botched and I have to start all over so I just find like I'm spending so much more time on my eyebrows than I would typically and that's just like for me, eyebrows is not the fun part of putting on makeup, you know. It's sort of like the necessary part, but it's not the fun part. 
So I just use the darker of the two because I feel like that color is much better. Definitely this lighter one, warmer one, is really off in shade for me. But the darker one isn't as bad. Um, but you see, like, I don't think I did that bad of a job. Okay, they sort of match. Look, it's fine. It's a fine product, but it's not revolutionary. And I think it's a bit too pigmented for my tastes. But like, I'm not a Anastasia dip brow kind of gal because that product too, for as famous as it is and wonderful, it's too much for me. It's just way, way too much for me. So I can't, it's not a product I'm comfortable with. And I feel like the same for here plus that 50% of the color in in this component doesn't really work for me this color is fine but the other half isn't and so paying $40 for this product like the shades should both be good for me and I shouldn't have to like worry about about how my eyebrows are going to look and and kind of waste products so for that reason i'm not the biggest fan but i could see if the color shade was right it's a pretty cool form of application and i think like potentially people would really like this so i could see why there's some some something to this um then i have a bunch of lip products that i'm not loving so i'm just gonna go through them oh can i can i throw in a um perfume that i found hideous this is autumn vibes by replica this one here normally i love replica fragrances but this one is terrible i don't like it i don't like it at all and one of my favorite fragrances is by the fireplace by them by maison margella uh, replica and i thought oh autumn vibes that's gonna no 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 it doesn't doesn't smell good at all. Now I feel like I forgot why I hated it so much. Oh! Oh my god. You know, oh, no, I touched my lip. It smells to me like very metallic, like a metallic burning building uh, in the woods. And then someone saves you and tells you to drink rancid green juice. I know that sounds very specific, but that is the idea it conjures up in my mind. Ugh, ugh. The burning metal though is the first, is the first part of that. I don't like that at all. It reminds me of a fragrance that I tried before from imaginary authors and uh, they have one called burning bull or bull's blood something like that it kind of smells like that don't don't do it to yourself no one should smell like that so the last up are a bunch of lip products um i'm not going to touch upon this one so this one i will insert a picture of myself wearing it this is the liquid lip from pixie it's a beautiful color it is such a beautiful color. It's called Caliente Coral. I love the color. I wore it on Valentine's Day at a lunch with my mom. And I just, in wearing it all day, my lips felt so dehydrated by the end of the day. They looked, even though the color, like from afar, is beautiful, striking. Um, when you look up close, just it's that, it's that super, super dry, dry look to them which is not flattering on my skin at my age right now. And also it's sort of like, even though the pro of it was super pigmented, one swipe um, and the thin formula, it's a very thin formula. I just found that overall, even it didn't even like stay put that long, like through eating and everything. So that the whole reapplication process and everything just to clean it up was very, very messy. Um, it is, it also has this issue where for me, although I like the doe foot applicator on it, that it has a point, it's extremely flexible. Do you see that? Like 
I'm barely pressing it and it bends. And the reason I don't like that is because it's very easy for it to flex whichever direction, including one direction you don't want it. And it's really hard to paint in your lip line and get the outline right. So for that reason, this is just a very messy, messy product for me. And also probably not a product for me because I'm not a liquid lip wearer. The next two, I can't believe I'm going to put them on. I'm sort of panicking. They both have the same problem for me the essence what the fake plumping lip filler i got this i don't even know why the hell i get this um i got this this, this is it i'm not going to put this one on because i'm going to put the second one on but it has whatever spiciness is in this one is also in the Too faced one the lip injection which i had never tried and I always wanted to try, um, just to say I tried it, but what kind of put me over the edge was this color here. This color looks so beautiful. This is Christmas Cocoa. It is. It was a limited edition color uh, lip injection. And I said, you know what? If I'm gonna try it in any color, it's gonna be this color. Let's give this a shot. Say a little prayer for me. Here we go. By this, it smells like hot cocoa. It smells like chocolate. But it also smells a little bad, like poop, like poopy chocolate chocolate that's gone wrong. Okay. Do I have to put on more? <laughs> mm. Okay. So this is this lip gloss by Too Faced. Yes, it's very glossy. It is very sticky. I don't like that. I don't even like the color it ended up being very very different than what i see in this component it kind of pulls a little like rose rosy and i wanted it to be a bit more chocolatey so that's no good um but my biggest issue and if i let this go for a while is my entire lip around the edge will turn really, really red, kind of like I'm wearing a bright red lip liner. And the the color itself will fade. And I think it's, I'm just having a reaction to the plumping agent, whatever it is. And I have to say this Essence does the same thing to me. Another product that does the same thing to me, though it's less intense, like right now, this is getting pretty intense. <laughs> It's growing, the intensity. Um, the new product from Makeup by Mario, the lip serum, the plumping lip serum gloss. That one, although the color is super beautiful, the colors and the range, the packaging, everything. It too has a component to it that is more of a spicy, burning kind of feeling on my lips than a kind of a cooling feeling. Like I could wear buxom lip glosses just fine. That's more of a minty vibe. This is prickling my lips. Um, probably they're looking more plump because my lips are in pain um, and it's unpleasant. It feels like a deep itch and burning sensation. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't really need this in my life. I don't know what I was thinking. I bought it because it was in a kit with a cute bronzer and I love the bronzer actually. So I got it for that reason, but this is, this is not for me. Anywho, that's it for me. Uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, or maybe it would be fun if you list a product down in the comments that you were super excited about, maybe even you bought at the Sephora sale or the Ulta 
sale and you discovered was not for you or maybe there was an element that you didn't understand about the product and you want to save one of us from making that same mistake so comment down below or just say hi and we'll talk soon okay take care bye